hopefully we'll see I don't know another thing I'm planning to do for funsies is collapse industries the interloper that would be cool but a creature caster diorama would rock it would I know I can enter in more than one thing so I mean if I end up finishing you know but here is the interloper from collapse industries DEATH! Shout out for DEATH! Sorry if I yelled into the microphone too loud. Sorry, I was so excited when I saw my DEATH come on. That's my boy. Just don't want you with too much on your plate. Oh yeah, like that's not the story of my life. So yeah, that's Collapse Industries, The Interloper. I want to say it's about 75 mil? Or something like that? 75, 80 mil or something? And uh, this is the plinth that I got for it. Well, I've had this already. I, I bought this, uh, I believe, at one of the Tulsa figure shows. Uh, I have a friend that always sits there. You're welcome, honey. That always sits there and um, sells plinths. And he was selling this one because it's, like, sort of uneven. The lining's sort of uneven on the bottom. But it's so little, you can't really notice it. And so he sold it to me for a dollar. And that's how I plan to have it look. Figured black, it would be perfect for this. I plan to prime it with um, ba Badger Steinal Res in light flesh. And then I plan to go in with some inks and pigment powders. Jacob Jansen, hello, welcome. Got a lot of people chatting today. This is good, this is good. Lots of people chatting, it's good, good, good. So what do you think? Would you like, is it, we, we got like what, just over an hour? Wow, that's a hell of a deal even for a misshaped plinth. I mean, yeah, I know, right? Supposedly, like, you'd really, you'd have to look at it. Like, you could see it looking at it from above here. One side is uneven from the other. But when you see it standing up, nobody's going to sit there and ding me for that. You know what I mean? Like, that's just crazy. So, yeah, he sold it to me for a dollar. And, and I bought a bunch of other plinths off him, too. So, I'm pretty sure that's part of it. I spent, like, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks. So, I'm pretty sure he was like, okay, here, have this for a dollar. I mean, you know. So I'm pretty sure that was part of it. So um, if you want, wait, is this another part to the model? Oh, yes, it is. Jesus Christ, roll this with the, the resin. Hold on a second here. Let me fix this. I don't even know what model this goes to. I'm not even going to lie to you. Hold on. But remember how there was all that excess resin from, from the creature cat, the small creature caster models? I mean, to be completely honest, I love these models. I think they're gorgeous, but I do think... There's a lot of excess resin, and it's not, I don't honestly think it's necessary. However, I will tell you that with their larger size models, that's not really a problem. You got to think about making dinner. Can we join you? I already ate, but busy day today. No, it's no problem. I'm glad you visited and chatted. That's awesome. That, that just adds more numbers for us, so it's all good. But what would you, what do you think? Would you like me to demonstrate for you how I would, um, drill into the plinth and into the model to mount it on? I could do that for you if you want. I have no problem, because I mean, that was something I was going to do anyway. And then, um, I'll show you how I sit there. And, uh, what I do is when I, if I mount them now. Useless wizard, how are you, dear? I eat also some hot dogs. You can eat hot dogs and hang out at the same time. Goofy. So basically, what I do is, if I mount the model onto the plinth beforehand, and sometimes I do, just to kind of, you know, so that I have something to hold on to, okay? The way that this is coated, I can hold on to it and paint it. It's not going to hurt anything, okay? Uh, at least I don't think so, and if it does, I have the proper things to fix it if that's the case. But uh, if I mount it, then what I do is I tape around. So that way when I airbrush on the primer, if I do, or, you know, so when I paint, I don't get it on the base. And then the tape that I use is like a masking tape. So it doesn't have that much strong of a tackiness to it. And then it won't end up taking off any of the paint. So sometimes I need to do that. Sometimes I don't. Uh, sometimes I'll play it by ear. But usually depending on how it mounts on. Mm. But if you'd like, I'll be happy to show you how to do that. It doesn't take long at all, especially when you have a Dremel. I have a um, 
I have a Dremel Micro. It is a cordless Dremel. It has a battery charger that uh, goes that, that mounts on. I paid a uh, hundred bucks for it when it first came out, and I also have extra bits and and uh, lugs for it and attachments. No, that's okay. I'm glad you still hopped in. That's so sweet of you. I know. Isn't that awesome that we do that for each other? We all sneak in from work <laughs> when we're not supposed to. We're like, Shh, you know. So I have this cordless Dremel. I have, mind you, not everybody is comfortable using a Dremel. You can use a, a regular drill if that's what you're comfortable with, but you're using a small bit. So that's kind of not, you know, it might not be ideal, but you um, can use a Dremel or you can use a pin vise if you prefer. That's up to you, okay? Uh, I'm very comfortable using a Dremel. Uh, I, I, some of you already know that before I worked in the gaming industry and made a career of it here, I had a career in the music industry. Uh, I, I have multiple degrees, but one of the things I'm also certified in is building and repairing stringed and fretted instruments. I used to own a guitar shop for 10 years in New York. And one of the things that we use a lot in guitar repair and stuff is a Dremel. And we use it for multiple purposes, uh, creating a wooden bridge for an acoustic guitar, for uh, putting in notches in a, a, a bone nut. Uh, actually, you got to kind of be careful with that, but if you know how to do the right amount, uh, if you have good hand control with a Dremel, you can do it. I've done it. Um, you can use it for other parts, for making the cavities bigger on a guitar body before putting in a pickup, things like that. So I'm very well versed in using a Dremel. And before that, my grandpa taught me how to use uh, a Dremel because my grandpa uh, is was, he's not alive anymore, but he was an expert mechanic. And so he also knew how to fix other things. He was very, very handy. So first what I do is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the attachment so that I can put the drill bit on, okay? So what I do is, in order to remove this sanding, which I used to uh, for some of the prep process on this, I'm going to remove this. So I'm going to, I'm going to press on the lock, and I'm going to put my hand here to unscrew this. And I'm unscrewing the whole thing because I'm changing the top attachment. And I'm removing this. I have a little box here that I keep all the, the bits in for the Dremel. And I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to put this attachment here. Put it back when I need it. And then here's another piece that was used to hold the, the staff part, to hold this in place. Okay? And I'll put this here. Okay? Now I'm going to add this attachment. This attachment is a separate attachment. You can get it from Amazon or Home Depot. That's where I found it for the cheapest. And I am going to add this onto here in order to be able to add in this bit. This is, a, a I believe, a 3 30 seconds bit. Okay? And if you're going to use something like a paper clip or a thicker paper clip to pin something in, you can use this size bit. Okay? Actually, let me use my hand. That'll probably cover it better, but let me use this. This is what the bit looks like, okay? It's a titanium bit, just so you know. When you're getting ready to drill through this kind of, it's ash wood, okay? Or if you are drilling and drilling into resin, you got to be very careful because you drill into both of those materials very quickly, okay? I'm pressing on the lock. I'm screwing this in. And you see, now it's locked in. And as I'm twisting, you should see that this is starting to close. Okay? So you see it closing, right? You keep twisting, it closes all the way. All right? You see that? Now, I want to loosen it so I can put the bit in. So let's get this out of the way. Let's get the bit. You got to put it as much into the center as you can. If it's not fitting yet, twist a little more. You don't want it to be that while you're trying to drill it in, that I mean, that while you're trying to screw it in to attach, you don't want it to be that the bit slides in or goes off to the side because that's not going to help you at all. So you're putting in the bit, still pressing on. See, you don't want that to happen. 
So I'm going to hold it like this sideways. I'm pressing on the lock and I'm letting it close. All right. You want to make sure it's in the center. You see how the bit is centered, right? A little spit and force it in or lube, you know, it depends on what you're into. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> so this Dremel Micro goes anywhere from 5,000 RPMs, rotations per minute, to 28,000 rotations per minute. You do not need to go up this high. All right? Five is good. 5,000 rotations a minute is good, especially if you are about to drill through soft material. If you're like me and you've been using a Dremel for like 20-something years, Okay, and you use it for 20-something years, you might be comfortable like me doing 10. But for the sake of showing you, I'll do 5, okay? And you can make it go higher or lower using the plus or the minus. I show you. So here's the on button. Another cool thing about this Dremel, it has a light in the front too. Watch, you see. See, that's lit up so that you can see what you're doing. Starting out... When you put it on, it goes to 15,000 RPMs. That, if I can get it to focus. 15,000 RPMs. We don't need it to go that fast. We're going into soft material. So we got to slow it down. Slow it down. We're about to drill into resin and ash wood. These are not hard at all. Okay? So... There's different ways that you can go about, I'm going to turn this off for a moment, but I wanted to demonstrate that part. Now, there's different ways that you can go about marking your center, okay? Kale Thin is rating with a party of five. Hi, Kale Thin, and thank you so much. Thank you so much for that raid. That's so sweet of you. Good for you. You're so sweet. So you could do using this, or, or I used to manage a framing store years and years ago, and you can actually... Thank you for the hype. Good job on that. Um, you could use something like a little bit of paint, like a little drop of paint. Okay? So if you want, we can go with that approach. For the sake of showing you, you know what? I'll do that. But I, me, I use different ways. I'm crazy. But let's use paint. Let's use this, this uh, Aram in blue. Okay? And what I'm going to do is, what I'm, I'm doing is I'm marking where the center is so I can mark it here. Okay? So... Let's put a little bit right there. Do you see that? It is, I know. And then we're going to mark it here. Right where I want it to be. Press down a little. And then look, see? It just marked it. It just marked where to go. Now it's a little off center, but at least I have an idea of which way to go. And so I'm just going to go a little more like right underneath it, but at least I have an idea of where to go. Okay, that's better than going in blind and being like, where the hell was I supposed to go? Okay, so that just marked the spot. Now we're going to drill. You ready? I don't care if a little bit of paint goes on here. It's going to kind of not, but I mean, it's easy for me to clean the back. Thank you, Kelton, for the follow. Okay, so I'm turning this on. Again, it turned on at 15,000 RPMs. We're going to knock it down. Knock it down. We're going to tell him, calm down. Calm, calm your tits there. Calm your tits. Okay. I'm going to start by drilling into the bust. I already pretty much can see by eye where the center is. Okay? And we're going to drill. Drill very steadily when drilling into resin. Because it's going at 5,000 RPMs. So that means it's getting hot. And it's melting right through that resin. Okay? Whether it's hard or soft resin, it doesn't matter. If it gets stuck, just turn it off. That happens. Not a big deal. This is hard res. This is harder resin. There we go. And then you just gently pull out like that, and that's okay. But it's still a lot faster than if you do a pin vise. Because if you do a pin vise, it you know you're, you you can end up eventually, especially if you're doing it a lot, you can end up hurting your wrist. Okay. I'm adjusting it real quick by uh, pressing on that lock. And putting it in a little more. I want to kind of see how deep I went. You don't have to use the bit in order to do that. What we're going to do is I'm going to use 
one of the paper clips that I'm going to use to pin this in. You could do this a number of different ways. You can pin this in with a strong uh, paper clip or, you know, one of the things I did, like when I did the group bust, I took a big, a big screw and screwed it all the way in, okay? But in this case, this is lightweight altogether, so I can use a bigger paper clip like this and it'll do the job, okay? But... And also, this one already has a screw in it. It doesn't go all the way to the other side, obviously, as you could see, but that's another reason why I didn't do the drill-in approach. And if it was a heavyweight model, then yes, I would have done that. But not, not for this one. There's, there's, no, there's no need, okay? So I'm going to see how deep I went on the bust, and I'm going to use this paper clip because that's what I'm going to use to pin this in, okay? To pin it to the base. And I'm going in. And I'm twisting to kind of help widen it a little bit. When you do, when you drill in with a bit, you want the bit to be a little bit smaller than what you're getting ready to put in, to pin, to pin it. So that way it stays tight and secure, okay? If you do too big, then you got to use a shit ton of glue in order for it to fit right. And, and then, you know, if you move it or, or hit it the wrong way, it'll all come off. You want it to be secure, okay? This goes back to drilling and pinning. Same same principle, same idea, okay? So, oh, I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry, King T'Challa. We just, we just hit you. So I went in about this deep. So that's it. So, sorry, let me pull it out so you see. So we're about this deep in. So I can drill in more. I'd like to drill in more. Tell it to calm its tits. Well, actually, I'm going to do 10 on this because I'm very comfortable with this. But just and just so you can see how it looks when you do that. So I'm going back in gently and pushing further to go in further. And you see the smoke? That's because it's burning through. There you go. Don't worry. It's not hot. It's not dangerous. However, on white alloy metal, let me tell you something. You do that with white alloy metal, then you really better be careful because the metal gets hot real friggin' fast. And you seriously can burn yourself. So if you are doing this on a metal model, then you're going to have to be a lot more steady. And you're going to have to go in just a little bit at a time. Like you just go for like one, two, stop. One, two, stop. And it'll still be a lot faster than going through with a pin vise, but you got to steadily go through a couple of seconds at a time, let it cool off, and then continue because you really can hurt yourself. So just so that you know. Now let's see how deep we are. Do a little tamping to get some of that dust out. And I'm putting it in. Twist, twist. Just to lock it in. Let's see how deep we're at. Put my nail to mark it. And you see how it's tight? That's what you want. And we're in this deep. That's good. That's what I want. So now what I'm going to do, okay, let me grab glue. I'm grabbing some thin glue, okay, because I'm going to get ready to glue this in. You can use accelerator if you want to, but you do not have to. And we're, in this case, we're not going to have to because we're going to have enough time for everything to dry. So I put some thin glue over the spot, okay? Now we're going to take that paper clip, we're going to stick it in. That's what she said. Twist, twist, lock it in place. Now the glue is getting ready to dry. If there's any excess that comes out from the, on the, around the edges, you could take a little paper towel, like what I'm doing, but I'm making a mess while I do that. All right, take a little bit of paper towel if you want so it doesn't show while you're, after you prime and stuff, and just spread it around, wipe some of it off, okay? Here's how it looks. All right. That's what we got going on here. That paint is from when we marked the spot and I tried to wipe it off. Makes no sense to wipe it off. It'll be covered anyway. That's what it looks like. Okay. Now we're going to get ready to do the other side. My goal is, I don't know how far up that screw from below is going, but my goal is going to be to drill into here. I do not want there to be a space in between the bust and the base. In some cases, some people will do that, but in this case, that's not what I want, okay? So that's why that's my goal. If it ends up being a little shorter, meh, no biggie, okay? So, I will grab another paper clip. Actually, I don't even have to do that. I can just cut it off, hold on. 
Let me do that instead. Let's put the, where is my clipper? Grab a clipper. For the ones that you use for drilling and pinning, I say use a separate one because after a while when you're using a certain nipper for drilling and pinning, it gets all it gets all screwed up, especially when you do like harder material ones. See how it's a little notched on some edges and it isn't completely flush? And this is old set of nippers, so this is what I use for when I do drilling and pinning, okay? So I'm going to clip it off. There we go. That was, since that's a thicker material, you got to put a little more elbow grease in there. Okay. If there's a piece that's bent, you just bend it straight. I'm using those same nippers to do that. If you don't like that and you can't get it to straighten out, you can always cut that off too. No biggie. But we're not going to have to do that. No biggie. Um, let me grab the rest of that paper clip so that my cat doesn't try and eat it. Alright. Now we're getting ready to do the plinth. Again, this is ash wood and it's coated to make it black. I don't, I'm not going to lie to you, I don't know exactly what it's coated with. I just know that if I end up taking some of that coating off, I know exactly how to paint it up and put pigment powders in such a way to cover it up. So that's what I'm going to do. Just so that we see where we're at and what it looks like. That's what we're trying to do here, okay? So we're going to get ready to drill. I'm going to do 10K on this. I don't want it to get stuck if I do 5 Ready? So I'm going to kind of move this over a little bit so that I have some control. There we go. I created a groove. That's what I was trying to do there. And I'm drilling in. You see some smoke because it's burning through the wood. Don't worry. This is perfectly safe. Drilling in as far as I can. I can tell I'm deep because of how it's reacting. We turned it on at 15K so that I can get the bit out. There we go. But mind you, I'm experienced in using this, so. Smell the burnt wood. Mm. I like the smell of burnt wood, too. I Yeah, that, that kind of does remind you of a dentist drill, doesn't it? So... What I'm seeing here is that there's some wood dust there, but not a biggie because that I can clean that up. That's not a big deal. See, I just took a lint-free glove and wiped it off. It does sound like a dentist drill though, right? There's the hole. I'm gonna see how it looks when I do that. Now, if it's a little off center, no biggie because I could always go back in i can always re-drill it you know whatever the case may be it's not that big of a deal um what i am going to do though is i'm going to i'm going to take a different so that i'm not because the, the glue in that bust might still be curing so i'm going to use the other part of the paper clip just to kind of dig in there and get it prepped for something going in and I'm going in that piece of wood. I'm making sure it fits right. It does. Good, good. Let's see how deep in we got. We might have to drill deeper. There we go. That's how deep we are. Yeah, had my knee shaking. Oh, God, I didn't know I could do that to you. Shit. <laughs> Let's see. Do we have to drill deeper? Let's take a look. Oh, it looks like we got it just right. The lengths match up. That's what I was making sure of. I'm trying to get it to focus, but see how the lengths match up? They pretty much match up. If not, then I can always trim a little off. As a matter of fact, just to be on the safe, I could do that. And I'm bending this out of shape. Hold on, let me put this away. Oh, that's my phone going off giving me a reminder about another doctor appointment I have tomorrow. Fine. Okay. 
trimming off and I'm going to trim off that piece on the end, the one where I bent, just because I want to make sure it fits. I just don't want to sit there and pull it out and go through again and it's just, just a pain in the ass. And I'm going through and I'm clipping it, the piece off. <clears throat> there we go. And that's my workout for the week. I will not be going to the gym. No, I'm kidding. So, think about which way you want it to face. Do I want it to face like this? I think I'm going to do this. Yeah, because of the way the head is shaped. Okay, I'm going to do that. So, now i got to do glue on the other side. And there's going to be a little excess coming off the top there that you can see, but that's fine because I want the base part of this to all connect. And I'm twisting to lock it in place. There we go. I did it! In the words of Izzy, I did it! And we have a wiener. See, there you go. That's right. Thank you for the hype. What do you think? No space. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. No shit, man. For real. All right. So. When you do something on a plinth like this, and if you lock it in beforehand, what you're going to want to do is you want to make sure that you have yourself set up for success so that you don't get paint on the plinth, right? So that is when, hold on, I'm going to move shit over for a second so I can grab the masking tape, which I think is on the top drawer here. Hold on a second. Yeah, here it is. All right, moving this over. So did that, did that, is that... A good thing I just showed you guys how to do. Did you learn something from that? I hope you did. So when I want to sit there and cover up a plinth or some other piece that I'm getting ready to paint, but I want, don't want something else to touch, I have masking tape. This is painter's masking tape. It's Duck brand painter's tape in blue. It's cheap. Okay? It works. Now, I'm going to teach you something from guitar building and repair too. If you're afraid that the masking tape that you're going to use is too tacky, then what you would do is if say you're wearing cotton pants like jeans or something, you would tack it on your pants real quick first and then you can put it on the plinth or on, in our case, it was on the guitar. Because one of the things that I used tape for on a guitar neck was fret dressing. Fret dressing is when you um, file the frets on the guitar or the bass or, or, or you know, whichever string fretted instrument because there's a few of them that have, quite a few of them that have frets. It's to make it even. Because what happens is when the frets get uneven and you start playing, then they, you start hearing a lot of buzz. So when you hear buzz when you're playing a guitar or a bass, it could be a number of things. It could be that the action, the height between the fretboard, the, the fingerboard and the, the frets and the strings aren't right. So that, yeah, that could be one. Your neck might have to be adjusted and, and, and fixed. So sure, that could be something too. Um, and it could, you know, so there's those two main problems that could be. But then also it could be that your frets are uneven. And if your frets are uneven, then you have to get a fret dress so that's one of the things that um we used tape on on the fingerboard was that and um and also when doing a refret too uh, replacing the frets on the guitar i would sit there and put the taping on the fretboard especially rosewood rosewood is so soft um purple heart is very sappy um, ebony wood, you don't have to worry about as much because it's a much harder wood, but it splinters pretty easily. Um, but I would put tape down on the fingerboard before hammering in the new frets and it would protect the fingerboard. Okay. So that's just, just so you understand how we come to, to this. So, which, so again, like I said, if you're afraid the tape might be too tacky, it's really not because it's painter's tape. Painter's tape primarily isn't. But if you want to be sure, you just put it like you're wearing cotton pants, like I'm wearing my onesie, but you just kind of tack it on there. It takes away some of that uh, tackiness. Yes, song request hasn't worked. And to be honest with you, it doesn't show up on my commands 
on a uh, chat bot. I removed it. It keeps coming back on the chat, but it doesn't show on the commands. So when you're getting ready to put the tape so that you don't hit any uh, paint on it, I have just enough space because of the way that the bottom of the bust is shaped that I could slide some tape underneath and put it over and then I could fold in on the center and fold in on the sides kind of like you're wrapping a present kind of like you're wrapping a present see that you can do that okay and that's how you would put that ta painters tape on but you gotta make sure primarily that it tacks at least a little bit at the top because that's where we don't want paint to go okay now Let's put on the next piece. Again, take off the piece. If you don't want it to be so tacky, just stick it on your pants real quick. Well, your shirt, you can put on your shirt too if you're wearing a cotton t-shirt. That's okay too. Just keep in mind if you own animals like I do, some of the hair might get on the tape too. <laughs> Which isn't the case on mine right now, but it is Oliver's, Oliver James's fur is on my onesie. So then I'm putting it under there, just a little bit underneath, folding in at the center, folding in at the sides, and now we taped this, this side, okay? Making sure it tacks there, okay? See that? Did that. Are you able to go into it, Dragon, and see if maybe, you, you know, if you could see the commands or whatever? For the song request, I mean? And then I'm going into this part here. It doesn't matter really if the tape is wrinkled unless the wrinkling is in a spot where it allows paint to sneak under or if it might prevent it from catching, from going on a surface it's supposed to go. So for example, I had to push this down a little so that it didn't cover up this bottom part of the skin to make sure it gets proper coverage. So I did that, okay? And now we're going to get the back part. That's the last step on that one, right? You would have to give me your password to log in as you do in it, as you do it. I think it's still in your timer section. You got an Easter egg? Where'd you get an Easter egg from? Oh, is it because there's supposedly some kind of Easter egg hunt going on on Twitch, right? I just clicked it. It's a challenge type thing. Oh, cool. What's that? I didn't get an Easter egg. <laughs> is there a keto-friendly Easter egg? <laughs> so here's how it looks with the tape. And this is by Collapse Industries. I'll, put, I'll type in the website for you. You should check out Kirk's stuff. He is ridiculous. And he plans to also stream on Twitch soon to show you guys how to do things like um, to show his process with uh, resin casting and 3D printing. So if you're into shit like that, you're going to want to watch him. So I'm going to put this away over here on its charging dock. But yeah, so what do you think? I'm, I don't know if I'll have this done in time, but the next show that I have coming up is Model Mania in Houston. And we rented a booth there. That's taking place on uh, the 20, Saturday the 27th. And I'm teaching at Multiverse Games on the 28th. Yeah, so I'm hoping that... Thank you so much. So I'm hoping that maybe I'll have it done in a couple of weeks. Because, I mean, I got some plans on it that should be relatively quick. I don't know. SG-1 Thor. Well, hopefully you think I did a good job. But that's how it looks, the tape, the painter's tape on the base. And it's not tightly on there. And hopefully when I... T and here's the thing, too. If you do this painter's tape approach... Don't leave the tape on for, like, years and years, okay? Like, 
if it's for a couple of days, a week while you're working on it, usually it's okay. But don't sit there, have it on for months or years or whatever, and then be like, oh, when I take off the, the tape, it's not going to take anything off. I'm not saying it will, but it's a lot more possible when you have adhesive sitting there for years or months than if it's just for a few days. So just so you know. And that's our alien tightly now drilled into his plinth. So.